Many people love the creepy aesthetic, especially with Halloween around the corner. I'm sure this particular video will help you create various holiday themed animation loops. With that, let's figure out how to create this creepy forest really easily within Blender. In our default scene, the first thing that we have to do is go to edit preferences and then under the add-ons tab, search for sapling tree gen. Make sure you have this add curve sapling tree gen checked and then choose save preferences if you want to do so. Then you can close it and to create the tree, tap X to delete the default cube first and press shift A and search for curve and under the curves, you should be able to find the sapling tree gen. Now, before you do anything, Go down to this drop down menu right there. And if by chance you do accidentally do something that makes the menu disappear, make sure that before you do any other commands such as grabbing and moving it around or scaling or rotating, press F9 or function F9 to bring the menu back. Now within this menu, there are a few settings that I'd like to change. And firstly, to make yours unique, you can just choose any random seed or you can find something that suits your needs. Once you're happy with the seed, you can make a few changes to these particular options. But the main changes that I think work for my scene is changing from geometry to branch splitting and playing around with a few of the settings over here. Now again, you can try out all of these different options and see what they do. But the main ones that I think work for this scene is increasing the number of levels from two to three so that you get these really creative creepy long branches right at the end. And then the next thing that I think helps the scene is this segments splits. So I'm actually going to increase this by not too much, but enough to make it look a lot more thick. So I'm going to go with 0.5 on the first one and almost a value of one or 0.9 on the second one. So I think that looks a lot better. And along with that, I'll also change this split angle from 18 to something like 25. And I think that just has a slightly better look. Now, of course, you can play around with all of these different rotations and all the other settings that are available. However, I'm not going to play around with these too much and I'll just start off with the rest of the tutorial. Each of these trees have quite a bit of geometry, but in case you see that they are still too low poly, you can actually go to the object data properties here, which are the curve properties and just increase this resolution from four to something like five or six. But again, don't go too heavy with this because we will be having many more of these in the scene. And because we don't want additional geometry to be added into the scene, we're actually going to make linked duplicates of each of these. So since we want two lines of these trees, we're just going to press G X minus four to move it by four units on the negative X axis. And then we'll press Alt D to create the linked duplicate and then press G X eight. And that way we get two copies. Now we'll just shift select both of them. Then we'll press Alt D followed by Y. And then we'll just drag this until they're neither intersecting too much nor too far away. So somewhere around this distance will be good enough. Once you're happy with it, just select it and then press shift R to repeat the action. Now that that's done, you have to give these some random rotations. So just select them, switch the pivot point from median point to individual origins. And then each one can be rotated about the Z axis by pressing RZ followed by any arbitrary amount so that they're not perfect variations of each other. And it will look like they're random different trees. Once you're happy with the randomization, shift select all of these. And once you're done selecting them, create another linked duplicate by pressing Alt D followed by Y and just moving it to the appropriate space. But remember the amount you're moving it by. So in this case, I'll actually move it by 17 units and I'm going to have to remember the number 17 for creating the looping animation. Once you're done with that, you can start off the loop. So let's go to our output properties, change the frame rate to whatever you want it to be. I'll go with 30 frames per second. End frame, I'm going to keep at 300 so that it's a 10 second long loop. Output folder can be wherever you want it to be. File format, you can choose FFmpeg video or PNG if you want to do so. I'm going to keep the container at MPEG4 and output quality, I'm going to choose perceptually lossless. Then I'm going to select my camera, press Alt G to clear location, followed by Alt R to clear rotation, followed by R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Then I'll press zero to go into my camera view, followed by G Z to just bring it up on the Z axis until I get it to a position that I'm happy with. Once I have it placed appropriately, I'll go to my camera properties, change the focal length down to something like 18. And remember, you can obviously change this based on your requirements, but I think 18 is good enough for me. And then I'll press the back arrow to go to frame zero and I'll tap I location. Then I'll go to my last frame, which is frame 300. And finally, I'll press G Y followed by the number that I had remembered back then, which was 17, which was how much you moved the second set of trees by. Once you do that, press I location and down here, press T linear to convert it into a smooth loop. Now, 
Although you do have everything set up for a smooth loop, you won't get a perfect loop because right at the end, there are going to be a few trees that magically appear when the loop restarts from the beginning. However, that might not be too much of an issue because of all the volumetrics which we will be using. So let's set up our scene and the lighting. For the scene setup, we'll just switch our viewport shading to render and we'll go to our world properties and change the background all the way to black. We'll expand this volume button and instead of none, we'll choose the volume scatter. Then we'll reduce the density down to 0.1 and we'll select the default light and press Alt G to clear its location and press G Y to just move it back to some arbitrarily far distance. Then we'll press G Z to lift it up. And once you're happy with the positioning, go ahead and shift select the camera and press Ctrl P and choose set parent to object. So that way, as the camera moves, the light will move along with the camera, creating the perfect loop. Then you can select the light, go to the light properties over here, reduce the radius down to zero. And if you want, you can switch off shadows. I'm actually going to switch off shadows because because if you want a nice loop, you might have to increase the samples to get nice smooth volumetric shadows. So I'm actually going to switch off shadows altogether and then start off with the material for my trees. For the trees, you can select any one of the trees and just choose whichever material you want. You can add in a new material or use the default material because you're not using it for anything else. Then I'm just going to change the base color all the way to black and I'll increase the roughness all the way to one. And I'll also make the metallic all the way to one as well so that the black becomes a pure black. Once I'm happy with that, I have to add in a floor to prevent these edges from being seen this sharp. So I'll press Shift A, Mesh, and I'll just add in a simple plane. But to actually see it everywhere, I'll just scale it up by a really large number. Let's go with 100. And right now, you can still see the edges, but that's easily fixed by selecting the light, which you can select either from here or by expanding the camera and choosing light over here, and then decreasing the diffuse down to zero and the specular down to zero as well. So that genuinely creates the nice misty fog at the bottom type vibes, which genuinely adds to this particular mysterious scene. Now you can switch between frame 300 and frame 0 to see if at all there are any more branches seen right at the end, preventing it from being a seamless loop. But clearly there are no extra branches that I can see, which means I'm going to be getting a seamless loop and this is good enough. Now again, you can select the camera and expand viewport display and increase passport out all the way to one just to prevent anything from outside your camera view to be seen. And then you can just make sure that there's nothing that's intersecting with your camera as you go through the entire loop. In my case, luckily there's nothing intersecting intersecting with the camera's view. However, if at all you do find something that is intersecting with your camera view, or you just think it's way too close, such as maybe this one over here, you can actually switch on your overlays and go back to object view and just select that particular tree. Press seven to go into your top view and select every third tree from it. So in my case, there's no tree present there, but at the back, there's one over here. So shift select it, make sure that your pivot point is still individual origins, and then press R Z and just rotate it till that branching is no longer an issue. You can actually go into into your camera view and press RZ to just rotate it till it's no longer affecting your scene. If you want, you can also just grab it on the X axis and move it towards the sides if you feel like. And I think this will be good enough for me. Finally, once you're happy with the way the entire loop looks, there are a few more things that you can add to give it an even creepier vibe. And we're going to use the compositor for that. We'll first expand this and choose compositor as camera so that whenever we're in the camera view, even the compositing will be added in. Then we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and we'll change this from the 3D viewport to the compositor. Now to actually use the nodes, we have to check use nodes and that way we'll have the rendered image followed by the composite image. So let's press shift A and search for a lens distortion node. We'll plug that in and I'm actually going to distort it by something like 0.1, but I don't want these edges to be seen, although you could add that in as well, but I'm just going to choose fit and that way it'll fit in and there'll be this really nice round distortion at the end, like a fish eye effect. You can of course expand this to as much as you want, but I'm going to leave it at 0.05. Then for the dispersion, I'm going to increase that as well to 0.05. And that way there will just be a little bit of dispersion where the reds and blues start separating out towards these edges, which I think looks really, really cool and adds into that creepy vibe. And once you're happy with the way everything looks, you can go ahead and press render animation. I hope this was an interesting one and there was a lot to learn from it. If you enjoyed it, do check out other videos on my channel because I post videos every single day and I'm sure there's something or the other waiting for you to discover them. Until my next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching, keep creating, and don't forget to stay creative.